Organized Sound Podcast, welcome back. I am here with a man of many names. He goes by Jeff. He goes by Shooter. He goes by Hero. He goes by... Uh, Films. Uno Films. We have the man himself in the building. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. How well, about you? Th- I'm doing really well. Thank you for joining me. I'm glad we linked up. We have a crazy amount of stuff in common, and uh, it's just always nice to meet somebody who's kind of on the same on the same wave. So yeah, um, actually I have my questions over here. I want to talk about, there, there's just a lot of culture going on where we yes, are right now. Definitely. We're here in Middletown, Connecticut. Oh yeah, um, North End. <coughs> you've been here for a little bit and you've kind of grew up in the surrounding area. Talk about what it's like growing up in this area. I uh, actually grew up uh, about two towns over uh, in a town called Glastonbury. It's very suburban, you know, what you would see in a m- suburban movie. <laughs> That's what I see as my town, very clicky. And, uh, but yeah, it's nice to grow up there. T- tell me about kind of like the, the culture a little bit. Like what are people like and what's the history a little bit? It's, uh, it's like a farming town. So I don't know. I definitely felt very like I didn't fit in with a lot of people in my town. There was like I, I grew up skateboarding, so that was always like a little bit different separation thing, you know what I mean, with that. And then, again, like, I liked 90s hip-hop when I was in high school. It's all I listened to, and no one was listening to that. So, again, I felt very isolated, So what isolated, were they into? Were different. they into, like, the 2000s Just radio bands music. type stuff? Anything on the radio. Uh-huh. And that was, like, I, I wasn't listening to radio music in high school. Gotcha. Like, at all. I was, like, very, like, stuck you in, were about stuck you in were a about. time area. Yeah, like, I was in a graffiti, and I was stuck in a very time Stuck in an old time. <laughs> yeah, you, you're telling me about the the graffiti. So how do you how does one get started in that? Um. So again, through skateboarding, one of my friends was doing it, and I was like, "That's cool. I want to start playing around with it." And I started just drawing and got more and more and more into it, and it just kind of it's, it's a it's a it's a stumbling it's a slope. It just keeps going. Right, <laughs> snowball effect. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Um, so you were like buying paint cans and all that and like different oh, yeah. colors and what, what are some other things you need when you're doing that? Uh, you buy the caps. Um, what else? Sometimes you buy magnets so you can put them on the bottom so you don't hear the balls so you can walk through areas quiet. Uh, wow. Okay. <laughs> so like there's like legal places to do right. it. Like, they, like in Hartford, there's a skate park that's like you can go there with cans and people, cops will drive by all day and they're not going to do anything, but then there's also like abandoned factories that are always another fun place to go and things like that. Yeah. What, what would you say are like the industries around here? What are the jobs? Like for, like for what I'm doing? Or? No, Connecticut. So I would, so Massachusetts, for example, I'm from Western Massachusetts. I would say it's a lot of like, um, health insurance, uh, just like government city type jobs courthouse and then like nursing the Mm. hospital scene is really big and then uh schools not so much my area but the wider massachusetts obviously obviously has harvard mit and stuff so to me those are like the kind of industries in the area how about for here it's definitely a lot of money right so i'm guessing there's a lot of there's a lot of lawyers a lot of things like just a lot of higher up things like, uh, right. like doctors, I'm guessing. <laughs> gotcha, gotcha. Okay, so I want to talk about this kind of early creative work. And uh, you said you got onto YouTube making videos about tech decks, which are yeah. the finger skateboards. Yes. So how, what, what, yeah, what possessed you to do that? Um, like I feel like everybody had a tech deck as a little kid. For sure. I and did. I just never lost mine. Uh, <laughs> So yeah, like through high school, through everything, I've always I go play with them all the time. I have a ramp on this table right now, and uh, yeah, <laughs> but um, yeah, being able to make videos with that on my desk, it's such like an accessible thing. Instead of having to like go out with my friends and make skate videos, I could just do it in my room at three o'clock in the morning and not and just experiment and play around. And so that was always like a, a fun way to do that. Okay, so tell me about some of your early learnings about a YouTube audience, you know, getting subscribers, stuff like that. What are some things you learned from those first videos you made? Um, 
at that point, so you didn't have you didn't have Instagram. Right. Which this was, was a different time. Yeah. So like, uh, kids loved giveaways. If you give like anything away, a, a deck, uh, a shirt, anything from companies, people always loved that and just like that really engaged. Can I, like even with now, it's, it's I would say it's a lot of parallel stuff. So even now at YouTube and now Instagram, it's just being consistent, and like people liked to be able to tune in every few days and have something new, have something new to watch, which was good. For sure, being consistent is like the number one thing you can do for yourself. Um, I wanna talk about the equipment. And so, kinda, I guess, continuing the timeline to now. To now, uh, I feel like maybe we should explain this more in the beginning of the video. Now you do a lot of live concert footages. Yes. You do a lot of music videos. And I kinda wanna have you take us through the progression of the equipment you started with when you started YouTube and then you know some of the upgrades and the major upgrades that brought you to where you are now in terms of your equipment. Oh man, so let's, let's start off. Even with the fingerboarding, we'll start there. I started with like a handy cam that I used to film like my skateboarding with. And then in high school, I got a, a Canon T3i. Okay. And that's where everything really started to like, really started to pick up because then I could get more like, it's more than just a, like a Sony Handycam. Yes. And that's when... Well, my question is, what made you pick that camera? And like, what were kind of the, your sources for information on technology at that point? I would say my source for pretty much everything was YouTube. And it was every kid on YouTube that made skateboard videos had a T3i with a Rockin' On Fish Eye lens. Yes. <laughs> and that was just like the, the, standard, the standard the standard thing to have. And, Hell yeah. And yeah, so I started with that. And actually one of my friends I've always skated with, he does BMX and skateboards. He was like, hey, I'm starting to do music. How much would you want me, or how much would you want to do a music video? And I never in my, never thought about it before. I was always just right. documenting, having fun with my friends. But then that came along and I, that was my first music video. I, I don't even know what year that was, probably. 2011, something like that. Early. Maybe 2011, right. yeah. Beginning of the decade. Yeah, yeah, right? Jeez. <laughs> it's been a minute. Okay, solid. And so when your friend comes up to you and says, yeah, you know, do this work for me, you have the skill, um, how, you know, how much do you want? Where, where do you think <laughs> is a good place to start if someone else is in that position? He gave me $50. Okay. <laughs> I feel like that's not bad, though. It's, yeah, it wasn't bad, especially because it, like, it was my friend, and we were already just hanging out in general, right. and Everything's for that to, like, and stuff. yeah, for that to just be like, oh, wait, I'm going to get 50 bucks to do something that I kind of already would have done, which was nice, and, like, again, like, if you love to do it, then it doesn't feel like as much of a job. Like, now right. I feel like I, I have that feeling a lot, like, everything I do is very fun, and even though it's paying everything, which is nice. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. That's a, that's a great place to be in. I think that's kind of like the new marker for success is this idea of I'm working on what I want to be working on. And I feel like for our generation, that's what everybody's working towards. Yeah. Um, I haven't even looked at my questions <laughs> yet, honestly. Sorry, bro. Um, I'm, I'm, to get I, you I want to talk about traveling, actually, because you've done – You've done stuff in Massachusetts. You've been out to New York. Mm -hmm. I'm sure there's some other places that you've done stuff. How did you, or Jersey is actually another place. Yeah, I'm in Jersey a lot. Post, um, some content. So how did you first start traveling and building these relationships kind of outside of your local area? Um, so, yeah, again, I was doing like a lot of like Hartford and just like local around here music videos. And actually this guy, Survival. Uh, Survival. 815, shout out. Yeah. Shout out, P. Um, he... Uh, he brought me to Miami one time and just to document his time down there and it was during it's rolling loud weekend So you're running into rappers everywhere. Wait, you, so which rolling loud was this? this was The first one was 20 the first one I went to with him was 2017. We didn't even we didn't even go into the into the actual event It's just Miami during this weekend. During, it's right. just a very it's crazy time. time. It's yeah. a buzzing time. Exactly. Okay um, But yeah, I started kind of going there with him. We've driven to um, like North Carolina to uh, fashion shows and Things like that. So I've he, I've been on the road with him the most. Actually, we're going to California at the end of the month. So that'll be Whoa. I'm excited about that. <laughs> Sweet. Um, so what what are some travel tips that you have for anyone that also <laughs> you know wants to travel and stuff like that, going back and forth? Well, my my, my main things to have I would say are uh, 
socks. Why are socks so important? Do because socks, like, get wet? You can you can be kind of like you can like not shower for a day and put on socks and feel better. Oh, okay. I don't know. It's just like it's right. It's like, it feels good. It feels I, good. I feel you on that. Socks, right. yeah. Just socks just. Being You're prepared. at home with a clean pair of as, socks. As a cameraman, also having a poncho, it's an easy $2 thing that you can throw in a camera bag. And you can just, I don't know, you can use it for a thousand different things. Ponchos are, are essential. Yeah, I always they're carry like them. They're yeah, like coveralls. Yeah, exactly. The overalls of like... I literally put it over me, cut a hole in a poncho, and filmed in the rain through a poncho. Sweet. Yeah, I feel like so you can do anything. So much of like <laughs> artistic work is getting creative and then kind of like riding the wave of like whatever comes up you just like handle it and yeah now everything's so like affordable like they're just like video things are so much more affordable now like like now it's like you don't need to have like like before it was just like a lot of people that had really good ideas and they like, couldn't do it because it cost <laughs> ten thousand dollars to get a camera but right. now like like i'm very happy to grow up in a time where i can for a few thousand dollars buy a 4k camera that can even my phone my phone shoots 4k and that like that's crazy that like I can do so much with that. Incredible, yeah, production value that you can get. Um, I want to talk about the editing side of things. When you have this content, how, what do you do when you're chopping it up and making it look nice? What are some of your go-tos software-wise? Uh, Premiere is pretty much the main thing I use. Okay. I, all, like so, pretty much all the way through, uh, even like with effects. I need to jump into After Effects a little more. After Effects. I need to jump into that a little more, but I, I, I dabble. Gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> But yeah, no, okay. uh, Premiere is like the main, it's the go-to for me. Yeah, yeah I feel like that's the industry standard right now. I was actually at yeah, Vice in Williamsburg, is the, and they're like, yeah, everyone here uses Premiere. And I was on yeah. Sony Vegas, and that's that what kind of like that. made me, I was like, oh, well, I guess I have to like do this other thing now. And and my computer is so bad. It was crazy. Like these render, the rendering an hour and a half video would take like six hours. Yeah. And I was just leaving it overnight, mm -hmm. and I was like, you know what? It's time to upgrade. Yeah. <laughs> it's time. Um, the premiere is heavy. heavy uh, I want to talk. We were talking a little bit about the live concerts. I Like, the first thing we talked about, actually, mm. was live concerts and kind of like this, this vibe and energy. I want to ask you about some of your first concerts that you really enjoyed that kind of like sucked you in and made you think, oh, yeah, I need to work around this medium so oh man i don't even remember the very first because like i would i would start off like i would say the webster in hartford was a is like my stomping ground yeah of filming how things. long has that been around it was a movie theater before this i'm pretty sure so it's been around for so a minute a long how long, long has time there been hip-hop shows there they i would say a couple years ago the old they would do like very specific rappers like they had like logic they had mac miller but they wouldn't have like those are the only other hip-hop shows i've ever heard of there a long time ago now they're very open to having a lot of things i work with concert crave and they are always at this always working at at the webster which is good i love i love the webster <laughs> i've not been i actually bought tickets to lil dirk and they canceled that and did it at oakdale mm. kind of recently um so so yeah, name name a concert that you just really enjoyed. From the uh, Webster. so the one of the first ones was it was Mosey and Lil T J. Yeah, and I'm there with an opener, and at this point, all the other concerts I'm doing are, I'm going in with an opener, or I'm trying to sneak in the back gate, or I'm just trying to shoot it any way that I can. But I'm I'm here, and this this lady Jenna that worked for Concert Crave was like, I I kind of just was talking to her throughout the night and then she's like hey do you want to shoot this I, I'll, I'll trust you to shoot this concert and i was like okay and then at that point i was like okay i have to give this my all i have permission now to do this yeah and i'm not I, when am i going to get this again i'm thinking at this point so uh after that i got her to edit to her at maybe like eight in the morning the next day and they loved it and after that i was just like hooked because now i'm i was allowed to be there I was right. told to be on stage. You got the, the co-sign. And like, don't get me wrong, sneaking around is very fun. And it's it's very it's great to get art. something out of that. Like, have you, have you there's a few people I, that in Connecticut that I know that are 
gods at that. Yeah. Oh my god. (laughs) Have you ever heard of denied approval? I haven't. Okay, this is a dude that has famously snuck into Rolling Loud a couple times, and uh, oh, I've heard. He's a. There's a video on this, right? Yeah, he's done a couple viral videos, but yeah, he's from Massachusetts actually, he's from Worcester, and he just gets around a lot, and uh, he. I, I don't know if he's ever paid to get into a rolling loud. Wow. And he gets like on stage. <laughs> That's like, crazy, yeah. Without a GA pass. So I've heard some stories of people sneaking in right. some pretty creative ways. I can't I can't blow the spot I, though. <laughs> I, I'm ready to blow the spot. On, uh, David Dobrik did it. So it's like at that point the secret's out of the bag. He did this one where it was like if you walk in somewhere with a ladder, no one's gonna see. Oh, I saw that, yeah. And they put on like the safety jacket and then just walk. <laughs> Like in a main, main entrance with a ladder and nobody says anything. But I kind of totally get it because people who are checking tickets at that level, they're very much in like the employee mode. Mm. They're like, I don't want to do anything to get in trouble. I don't really care. Yeah. And that's what it is like almost 100% of the time. So the only time you're going to run into trouble is if you do something that kind of creates this like, oh, let me get a manager and ask. That's when you're going to get like shut down. I've oh, learned yeah. like if I like in the, like shows of the like even at the Webster like there's times where like I don't have a pass on my wrist and it's like I've like literally pulled out my phone and faked I've been on my phone and just been like I'm coming I'm I'll be right I'll be on stage in two seconds and just to seem busy walking past these people and like any way to I've done a lot of things I've I've gone on the other side I've you know I tried everything to right. to get yeah. it on stage when you know the building too you have a huge that, yeah. advantage that helps a lot you know all that the nooks and crannies. Um, okay. I want to ask you about, um, your more recent music video. So you did a music video for all one K who's one half of the Zayas YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. Um, how did you guys connect? Um, so I actually got that through, uh, my buddy Christian, uh, Christian Royce. He, uh, I don't know where he exactly met him, but, uh, he hooked that up. So when v came to, to New York, he was like, yo, how fast can you? Come to New York and shoot this. <laughs> oh, so that was like a like. It was a very that last was a minute phone call and like let me get out there. I think I was, I'm, if I'm not mistaken, I'm pretty sure I was sleeping, like the middle of the day. I like, took a nap, and I wake up to Christian calling me, and he's like, "Come to New York right now." And I, I was, I asked my girlfriend, I was like, "Drop me off with the train." Ran to New York, and uh, yeah, I shot that video in so a short amount of time. But when you walk into a situation like that. As somebody who's kind of also in the seat of directing things, is is there a treatment ready for you, or is it like, hey, let's like get some cool locations? What are, what are your concerns in a with, moment like that? With that one, that was very on the spot, no treatment. Like Christian knows New York better than I do, so Christian yeah. knew exactly where, what spots he had in mind, so, which was nice to, to just kind of hop around to these different places. But uh, yeah, that was very just like make sure things look good instead of uh, just like cool locations and, and pretty things like that. Right. And so then on the editing side, what did you do? That's actually, it's funny you say that. That's where more of the editing does rely is like when you have like less locations and less of a treatment, that's when you can kind of explore with the editing more and just like throw wild do some right. more crazy things. Color and like, ups. yeah, exactly. Just to kind of like keep it interesting. And it, it becomes more of like an art piece at that point. But obviously, other videos are art pieces, but just like more of a visual, visual art piece than like a story that's being told. Exactly. Um, I I totally know what you're talking about. There there is that contrast now in music videos where it's like, I think that accessibility, like you said, people kind of understand now that they're gonna want to make a lot of music videos in a year, so they're not, you know, people aren't trying to make Michael Jackson Thriller every time. Mm-hmm. There, there's like the big budget videos where they want like a huge crew and stuff like that. But then there's also like that, okay, let me just get something cool going and make sure that my swag is like being communicated and make sure that the edit is just like fire and people understand that. And I think a lot of it stems from um, Chief Key because he, oh, he bit, came yeah. in <laughs> and like, it was very much that, like, hey, I'm here in my environment. Oh, here's all my homies. And like, okay, let's like work on the edit and make sure the edit looks cool. Yeah, like fam- Famous Bam. Dex as well. Famous Dex is 
Oh, he he put out forgot how many music videos in like 2016. It was like he well, fifteen hundred. Sure I don't know. I'm, averaged, I'm probably bugging, but I'm like pretty sure <laughs> something he crazy. Averaged every other week dropping a music video. That's crazy. Yeah. So um yeah, I mean they were he was working in that period of time. But I think a a big thing that because like obviously there's like I would say I I categorize different videos. There's like street videos where it's something like a Chief Keef video mm-hmm. where. It's just kind of the same kind of thing over and over again. Okay. But a big thing that I like to do to kind of separate myself with things like that is camera movement. It's yeah. just big. I like big sweeping motions and okay. things that look like I'm not doing it. Kind right. Of thing. Right. Like I, I came from even before, like I loved movies since I was a little kid. Like I've always been a really big film person. So like I feel like that definitely transpires into what I like to make as well. Like I like the crazy – the music video side is brings the effects, but then the way I film it comes from films and things like that that I've watched. Fire. So, is there anything? Are you using any of like the hand wands or anything to kind of create? I have that, a gimbal. The you have a gimbal. I have a gimbal that, okay, so that changes everything. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I so used that's a like, glide is cam that before. Two hand. It's like I two have a hands? one-handed one. Okay. I actually prefer the one. Sorry, this far. I have a one-handed one that I I like that one just because you can kind of like. I reach my arm out, especially at concerts. Like, mm-hmm. I'll go over a crowd. But, like, with the two-handed one, like, I would use that more if I was at a music video shoot where I could really set up a shoot, have, right. like, a dolly cart where I have, like, things around, you know, different lenses and I have all my stuff. And, yeah. But, like, if I'm on the go, I like to, like, like, if I'm at a concert, I like to just have, like, not even a bag on me. Like, I'll hide my bag somewhere behind stage or, like, in the green room if they have one. And pretty much just be like batteries in pocket and camera in hand. And I like to be very, I run around a lot. when Yeah, I'm I feel like on, the like, concert, the on stage piece, it's a lot more about capturing the moment mm-hmm. than it is like, okay, like let me, because the music video is such a, a closed environment. So it's like, oh, everything moves when I say it moves versus like, oh, this is the best part of the concert. I better get I have this. to be there at that time. I better get this. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So the other music video I want to talk to you about is, um, the cowboy one. Mm. And I, he's like a really big artist. Yeah. I would say. Is that the biggest artist you've ever done a music video for in your opinion? Yes. Sadly, that video got taken down uh-huh. the other day. Did you re-upload a director's cut or something? So he had the, ori- they, the one with G Herbo is the, okay. is the one they made after. And Oh, so they were gonna post mine, and what I, my my information was gonna was gonna be on the song, uh-huh. and then they we had to schedule a whole other shoot with Gunna somewhere else. So I uh-huh. I wasn't looking too bright from there, but uh, my buddy said we could post the that version, but then it started to get a little bit of traction. So I think they were kind of like, hey, we got to cut it out. Uh oh. Yeah. We got, yeah, we have. But to it's have, not bad. It has to be one one direction. Yeah. Um, I'm happy I got to meet him. He uh, right. How was that? I actually got that again through Christian. He has a song uh, with Cowboy Risky. It's on all platforms. Check it out. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, he uh, hopefully we'll get another uh, we'll get another video with him in soon and uh, revive that. <laughs> so my next question is, what is it like working with kind of like the labels and the brands and the kind of organizations where everything needs clearance and this type of stuff? How do you like? I don't. <laughs> right. Um, of course. It makes everything harder for you. Yeah. Like I, I, but how do you navigate it? Because obviously you understand why it's important. Yeah. Like I didn't really know about it too much until maybe like the last few months and like at least to the degree that everything really is. And like it just kind of makes planning a thousand times more important and like just, I don't know, getting your point across properly and like making sure that like all your ducks are in a line to make sure that everything is good or even to like – and sometimes it's out of your control. Like my buddy was telling me, he's like, that feature came in late, and that feature was a big feature, so it just kind of happens that way, and uh, right. you just kind of got to deal with it. <laughs> right. Things things take on a new life, and it, it is kind of hard too. Um, the other thing I wanted to ask you about was, um, did you do a shoot with Billboard? No. With uh, we were. Um, my buddy was in there. We were with um, Quinn NFN, and I was doing a vlog with him. 
Oh, okay. uh, just throughout the day, he was going to a bunch of labels, and uh, that's why I was up in there. Okay, okay. But that was, Quinn that was cool. NFN. He is a rapper from Texas. I think he's from Texas. If okay. I'm not mistaken. I think he might be from Houston. But uh, yeah, we were uh, we were with him. We went to Double XL and a couple other labels, and that was a really cool How experience. Was that? Yeah, that Doing was doing that kind of circuit. Well, I didn't know exactly where we were going throughout the day. So you, so you just like, kind of show up somewhere. Go, yeah, and it's, go to the fifteenth floor, and it's like, oh hey, this is this. Yeah, and it's all buildings that I've I've walked past a thousand times in New York, and so like I've been knew. here, and yeah, I even when you're in the lobby, sometimes you have no idea, and I I, I go up to the cert like whatever floor it is, right open the door and there's big double XL signs and I'm like, like just taken back right, for a minute. Here. Like, Oh my gosh. Yeah. But yeah, that was, that was a cool environment. I ran into, um, who did I run, run into there? Oh my God. This is bad. My picture. Went. Yeah. How long? This wasn't long ago, oh, right? Man. How recently? Was oh this? my God. Kevin Gates. Oh my God. Kevin Gates. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. He was, it was funny. Like we were like two doors down and uh, one of the guys that was working there was just like, hey, do you guys want to meet Kevin Gates? He's, he's in the next room. And we're like, uh, yeah, 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 please. That would that'd be awesome. And we'd be going there, and it's this beautiful corner office room with glass, and it was gorgeous. Yeah, there's so cool, many nice cool. buildings in New York. And, like, the higher up you get, like, you just, like, see the water. Oh, taller yeah. taller than any other buildings around, and it's like, whoa. I can understand why this is, like, the world's most expensive property. Um I want to, so I want to get back to your brand, Casey No Films. Um, you talked about how this brand has lived with you for a really long time, and you kind of just developed it into a business from there. What are, first of all, how did you make the logo? The logo is like, got, I think I'm going to probably like uh, insert a picture of the logo <laughs> right here, and we'll talk about it. Um, so that logo, uh, my buddy actually made that for me. Uh, yeah. My buddy John Cowart, he owns uh, Cowply. It's a finger war company. Good friend of mine. Um, I I don't do logos. I tried to do it. And yeah, I couldn't do it. They're, <laughs> I, they're involved. I couldn't come along with it. And we were kind of just brainstorming back and forth. And I he his illustration style is like is awesome. I love his illustration style. So like he was doing them in a very like corporate way. He was sen sending them to me very like straight. And I was like, hey man, I love your style. Can you make that the way that you would just draw it? And that was the first draft he gave to me, and I love it. <laughs> wow, he got it on the first try. Yeah, after after I said just do it the way do, you, do the way you would do it. Okay, don't don't try to great. make it like don't make it the way you think I would want it. Do it the way you would want it. And exactly. Yeah. I mean, I think when you're with a really talented artist and you know them, that's almost always the best way to go. Like, yeah. hey, go crazy. Um, so what do you want to do with the brand? What do you envision for the brand? Um, wow. Uh, probably like within the next couple of years, I would like to like branch out and have people like under me, uh -huh. not, not under me, but like working with me Yeah, more of to a the degree Switch. of like, I have a team right now where I, of like, I haven't had it for a while, but just like now I have two close friends that I really work with fairly consistently and just the power in that, but also having like, let's say like. To a degree, if I have enough gigs where, oh, man, I have a concert at the Webster and I have a concert at the Palladium, I'm going to send out this guy because I trust him to shoot this for me, yeah. and I'll edit it later. That's what I'm working on finding now is people that can I can, that can shoot for me, that, I, that right. shoot like me. That way I don't want to copy it, but like, you, you know. You can multiply the amount of content that you have. Exactly, yeah. Just finding the, the, finding the people that are, are down to, to make the jumps and everything. Okay, we've gone through a lot of stuff. I think one of the last questions that I ask everybody um, is about marketing because I went to UMass Amherst, mm -hmm. I was a marketing major. What are some of the marketing elements that you think are important in you know, someone in your field, which is videography, or someone in music? Uh, I think we brought it up before, but just being consistent is a big thing and just, uh, like I've been using Instagram ads. I don't know if anyone actually gets them. Yes. <laughs> but like right. I, or anyone that I know that gets them, but I enjoy using that a lot just because I learned that it's more than just like sending out an ad, you can target where it's going. And like, even for example, like I'll, I'll look up things on YouTube on like how people have been marketing even for video and stuff. And I'll, if let's say I'm at Rolling Loud yep. in Miami for a weekend, I'll put out an ad in Miami that weekend because I know that 
there's so many of these exact people that are into this here at this right. time. And like just like little things like that. Like fine yeah. It's the the little niches. Figuring out where your audience is and getting to them. Mm-hmm. And getting getting your work to them. Because yeah, I think the the problem with a lot of ads and this was kind of just like the way things were done for so long, right? A billboard ad. Mm-hmm. And now everyone driving down the highway sees the billboard. Okay, does that apply to me? 80% of the time, 90% of the time, no. Yeah. And then, okay, we're, we're getting to a couple people that they might be interested in this. But now there's so much information. There's so much data that it's like, oh, yeah, your work correlates to this, this genre, this, uh, you know, segment of lifestyle. We know everyone who's a part of that. Mm-hmm. Let's get it right to them. And then you're cutting a lot of the fat of just like, you know, it, it's no longer about trying to reach everybody. It's about trying to reach everybody who's interested. Yeah, exactly. Finding the right the right people. So have you thought about YouTube ads at all? I haven't actually. That's okay. something I need to I think I should delve into. Okay, this is why YouTube ads is the play, right? And I haven't done it either, but I'm realizing this. It's like everyone's getting demonetized. So oh, yeah. every, it's like every video I it's put a out. lot cheaper to buy an ad because Basically, it's a lot harder to, you know, get it sold in the first place. So um, yeah, especially that's like something that I want to look into. But it's, it's like not as obvious. You know how like mm. everything in Instagram is like built in like, you know, you just boost a post and it's like boom. It's in, yeah. Versus like I think YouTube, YouTube's a little more work to just get yourself up and running. But I think there's some real value there. And I think that's something a lot of people aren't necessarily cashing in on. So. Mm. Yeah. Not a bad idea. Yeah. Sweet. Oh, wait, I do have, I have more questions. Yeah, keep going. Man. I was like, I feel like I'm now no, like really starting to get done, into it. I was like, not, but no. I couldn't like speak properly before, but I don't um, like into this. Yes. <laughs> I, I want to talk about the Connecticut music <laughs> scene more specifically, because you were kind of telling me about, well, I don't even know if it's like the music scene, but the scene in general, because mm-hmm. we were talking about some other people, some other artists that we're familiar with and stuff like that. Just people that went to school around here. What, how excited for you are the how excited for you are you for the talent coming out of you know this Connecticut area right now northern Connecticut I'm um, actually pretty hyped I feel like there's there's a big variety I would say like there's right a lot of different sounds yeah, yeah all over the and, place and the value of that is like okay there's something for everyone so now it's easier to invite everyone in there's going to be something you like Come check us out. Mm-hmm. Now, like, don't get me wrong. Like, there is a Hartford sound. Okay, what? How like, would you describe it? Do you guys know what Dumbin music is? It's very like fun. It's a certain, I don't know, like the exact beat of it, but it's like there's a certain beat sound that you can hear, mm-hmm. and it's very. It just gets you in the mood, and yeah, so you it's can party just hear music. It. Yeah, like it doesn't like, have like an exact like. Yeah, like it's it it's very like it's funny, but it's also like it can be hard though. Like it can be like they can be saying some like gang shit, but it's also you're gonna dance to it and have a good time. You know what I mean? Like, gotcha. And so, who are some of your favorite people inside of that sound, and who are some of your favorite people outside of it? Oh man. Um. So first, I would say Zoe, R.I.P. Gangs Delicious. Um. He. I feel like he brought it out from, he made it a, made it the fun dance. Mm-hmm. Before it was, it was like a, it was a gang dance. And now, or like, and he brought it out to just like doing other dance moves in with it, doing like Harlem Shake. He, right, he doing added Doing other things. To it. And now there's, there's, I forgot the Instagram account, but there's, there's like, there's accounts on it where kids are just going crazy and, and it's because of this kid. And even even farther, it goes out even more with like even J Rock. We were talking about J Rock before. Big Red J Rock. Uh, yep. J Rock is also within that same same like community as well. But yeah, oh yeah, what is the name? Of it? it is uh, CT eight sixty danced. If you go on there, they can see they're reposting all the good days. stuff, all the best stuff. Oh yeah, yes, definitely. Okay. Um, and so then the other question was outside of that sound. What's some of the more creative stuff that you're running into? Oh man, so um, another person we were talking about uh, earlier was Two Tails. Uh, he's someone I love to work with. He's very lyrical and can just he makes again fun music. All the way to 
my buddy Nye, uh, 980, lives right down the street. Um, I took a break from music videos for a while, and he actually got me back into them. So thank right. you for that. What, what yeah, made you take sound a break? super different. Um, just like I was making music, making music videos with very close friends, and things just weren't going at the same rate that I wanted them to go, and I kind of just was a little discouraged. And uh, I met new people, and then I just kind of got he like was like let's just do this and try this, and then we kind of started doing it. And then it was funny like. We even took like a break, like a shooting for a little while, and we just made our a, la- a video the other day on New Year's. Yeah, it's funny. I invited him over at, at twelve o'clock just to hang out, and then we were just like, let's shoot a music 12 video. Twelve o one, you're shooting a music video. I had it out the next day at oh, like wow. had out the next day at uh, freaking like twelve o'clock or one o'clock or something like that. But yeah, it was like our goal to, all right, this is how we're gonna enter twenty twenty. Have people right. Like, I'm in this mode of. Going in. Work mode. I, <laughs> yeah. think, I think that's such an important part that you're bringing up. There's such a momentum piece to the creative work. Is like sometimes you're really not feeling it. Everything's tough. You feel like you're in a slump. You feel like you want to fall back from it. And then when you find this new inspiration, when you find something to cling to, and so like turn of the year is a good example or just like, you know, you see something on the internet that inspires you, like a song or an artist yeah. inspires you, and you're like, whoa, like, let's go. Like, let's hit the road. Like, yeah. let's just make stuff. Like, and I'm in a very creative and excited space as well because um, just, like, finding someone like you is what does that for me. It's like, oh, whoa, like, all right, there's somebody cool. Oh, he's not too far. Oh, he's doing, he's on the same wave. So I, I think that's a really important part is getting inspired, finding your inspiration. Yeah. Um, yeah. Anything else you want to talk about in terms of Connecticut or the work or any shout outs you want to give? Oh, man. Shout out to Zach. Shout out to Eli. You guys know who you are. Uh, man, I don't even know. <laughs> I mean, we covered it. Man. We did a lot. We did a lot of talking about everything. Well, Book I a video. It. Book a music video. <laughs> Book a music video. Like a concert recap. Your DMs weddings, are open. Anything. What's, yes. the, what's the best way to hit you up? Um, you can hit me up on my. If you go on my Instagram, my you can DM me there. I have a, a email account on there, and my um, number is on there. Okay, perfect. So any of those. So what's the Instagram again? Spell it out here. At Hero Asian Man. H E R R O Asian Man. Check him out. I'm here with the shooter, yeah. Jeff, man. Nice to meet you, man. I appreciate it. Thank you. It. I appreciate it. All right. This has been Organized Sound Podcast. Thank you for listening. We're signing out. <laughs>